Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the house, Dale Chanel's 48th World, where you get all content t- topics, and we get down and we discuss them in the house. That's what we do. That's how we've always done it, and we are never changed. Okay, I've got Tia Mari and Corey Hardick. Uh, they finally got their divorce. And I'm like, y'all were divorced way before this divorce that was put on paper. Okay? Just, it's plain and day. People just do what they do. <laughs> All the time. But I don't know if it was any infidelity, which I'm pretty sure it was. Because I just really feel that way. Mm-hmm. Something ain't in, the, the milk ain't clean over there. Something in the milk is just not curdling, if you get my drill. Now, my whole perspective on what happened, I think Tia had found him with a guy. That's just my thing. And that's probably something she could not handle, that she wasn't going to do anything about it but get rid of him. Because if it was a female, I think Tia would have, like, somewhat had a little bit more leniency in it, but she might have found out that her husband was a down low guy. And like I said, I can't prove it. It's just my perspective, my opinion. And I think that was something that Tia was like, "Uh uh-uh, I can't handle this. I'm not going to handle this. And you need to go. And she had a very ironclad uh, well, I thought it was ironclad um, prenup agreement because baby boy didn't walk away with anything. He didn't get spousal support. He didn't get alimony. Or not, was it alimony or was it child support? I think it was child support and um, spousal support, I think it was, that he tried to get. But we'll read on and see what was what. Okay, we got Angela A. from People Magazine writing up an article that said Tia Mori and Corey Hardick set six months guideline for introducing future partners to their kids. I'm like, what kind of shit is this? Okay, six months. My thing is, you they shouldn't see the kids until and only until. A year or something plus, okay? They're trying to get to know you. They ain't trying to get to know how your kids are going to fit into this relationship. See what I'm saying? I think you should have went a year and a half, too, if possible. Two years, if possible, because you don't know. People are out there scheming and scamming every day. So why would you want your child to be in the midst of Someone that you're not even really sure about. I'm just saying. And on the flip side of things, what could that? What could it hurt? Either. So I'm playing two sides tonight. What could it hurt? Your child see you with this guy, and y'all trying to date each other. Really, you ain't trying to date him to marry him or date him to have a real good relationship. That's not really how it starts off. When you meet somebody, you're infatuated. You are sizing them up, trying to see how, what, where, and why they can fit into your life. Because you got to get your emotions straight with yourself. 
in that person before you try to introduce them to your other world. Mm -mm. No, no, no. See how the person treats you? If they treat you like you're royalty, then you go for, okay, do we need to be exclusive where we're dating only each other? And then that's where the tipping part comes in. Okay? Because I think y'all should have really played with each other, known each other for two years. I'm just being serious. Because you're going to pick up how they act at a certain place, time, and day. Or whatever time y'all hang out. Mm -hmm. I mean, is he going to be one of those men that wants to have sex within two weeks, three weeks, four weeks of knowing you? Or are they the ones that are compassionate? They want to spend as much time with you as possible. They always spoiling you. They always, you know, uh, how you call it, predicting what they think you want. Okay. But anyway, Tia said, uh uh. I really don't, excuse me. I really don't know if it was Tia and Corey that made up this particular guideline or was it just Tia? Okay. Well, y'all know how I feel of why they broke up. Okay. Because it could have been some sort of financial disagreement or you know maybe somebody used more of the funds in the open account where both parties can dip out of or you know my it could be a it could be a really vast amount of reasons why a couple separate the main one is financial the second one is infidelity and the third one Y'all just not happy with each other. Y'all like y'all wake up in the morning and y'all stare at the other one still sleeping and you be like, damn, did I fuck this up? You know what I'm saying? Why did I get involved with this person? I don't even like this person no more. And you start thinking of ways to start fights, you know, out the blue. Then you start thinking, ah, you know, I just don't want to be with you something and make some time up. Be with my girls and stuff like that. I mean, you just really start acting funny. Uh, I'm sure someone or everyone has experienced that type of situation where you just don't want to be with that person no more because you've outgrown the space and what made y'all got together. You know, that romantic part, that friendship part, everything's just crumbling. And you don't know why it is. It's because... Somebody outgrew each other, and y'all didn't stay equally yoked in a sense or equally um, following the steps of the journey that y'all were taking together. Somebody got up and woke up small and saying, this is not working for me, and we need to find out. And, of course, you can go to counseling and this, that, and the third, but it's still going to be a time where you still have to make that choice yourself. Okay, but going into this story, it says the exes have included language in their divorce settlement that dictates how they'll navigate future relationships, documents reveal. Okay, Tia Mori and Corey want to be very careful about introducing future partners to their children. The sister sister along 44 and all American homecoming actor 43 dictate the rules around significant others and their two children, daughter. Cairo and five and son Creek eleven as they finalize their divorce in new documents obtained by people. Absent an agreement to the contrary, each party is restrained from introducing the minor children to a new romantic partner until that party has been in an exclusive relationship with the romantic par partner for at least six months. The documents read. And my whole thing is, how you gonna know? How you gonna know if they haven't been introduced and one of the parents, meaning Tia. Or Corey has said, don't tell my business, okay? If your mama don't want me to have no woman over here in front of y'all. But as you can see, she nice. Ain't she nice, Corey? Ain't she nice, Caro? So keep that secret. That's what Corey may say, okay? And I'm like, okay, here we go again, all right? But anyway, never miss a story. Wait a minute, that's not it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 
Okay, each party is further restrained from permitting his or her new romantic partner from spending overnights when the minor children are with their custodial parent during the first six months of the exclusive relationship. The file continues. The parties agree that the restraints set forth in this paragraph are in the best interest of the children. No, they're in the best interest of you because you, Tia, may be jealous seeing him with someone else. Or, Corey, you might start to have some kind of feelings when you see Tia running around with a different man. Okay? Um, jealousies are still there and probably will always be there to the end of time or to the end of that relationship. But anyway, um, it says the pair also agreed to uphold their previous agreement, which was proposed by Maori in October court filing to share legal and physical custody of their children. After 14 years of marriage, Maori announced the couple's separation in October with a heartfelt Instagram post. I have always been honest with my fans. And today is no different. I wanted to share that Corey and I have decided to go our separate ways, she wrote, alongside a black and white photo of the couple. These decisions are never easy and not without sadness. We will maintain a friendship as we co-parent our beautiful children. Okay. <clears throat> the actress continued, I am grateful for all the happy times we had together and want to thank my friends, family, and fans for your love and support as we start this new chapter moving forward in our lives. Now, you know I ain't got no sense. I don't need to know anything personal, but I'm as nosy as hell. I'm like, girl, did you find him with a man? Did you find him with a man? That's all we want to know. Okay? Or did, he, or did he find you with somebody older and disgusting? I want to know. We want to know over here. I ain't got no more for this video, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.